Hello friends, how's it going? Alex Yu here and today is the weekend, Saturday to be specific and we're gonna finally finish Transformers War for Cybertron on Netflix. I got episode 5 and 6 to watch so we're gonna start off with episode 5 and let's see what happens. Just finished watching episode 5. That was a pretty crazy episode. I had a feeling that episode 5 being, you know, um, the the second last episode was gonna feel more like a like um I guess a two parter because like episode five and six right it'd be like a um, a fifty minute uh, um, uh, story even though it's like six episodes that are all connected but I feel five and six are truly gonna be the ones where you feel like okay this is gonna be the true finale so there's quite a few new developments here a lot of story new developments a lot of uh, a new story developments a lot of new concepts. Uh, first of all, we learn more about the um, the Alpha Trion protocols, and we we learned that it's something that um, the Decepticons uh, uh, didn't really even know about. But conveniently, Shockwave seems to have a plan against it, launching this new this virus to um, to to knock out uh, communications, right? Which happened to be very convenient. It's like, oh, I think I just gotta have this up my sleeve. And then Megatron's like, w w you've been working on things over my head? Tell me more. <laughs> and then Soundwave doesn't seem to agree with it. Uh, but it seems to work out in the end. Which, like I said, happens to be very, very convenient. Um, there's also um, uh, something introduced called the Sea of Rust. Now, I... It sounds very familiar. Uh, it might have it might have been heard about in G one. I'm not sure, but for some reason, I seem to have heard about the Sea of Rust before. So when they brought it up, I thought, okay, this is something that uh, that seems like it's not an entirely new concept, uh, but um, uh, but it's it, it's like semi new to me because it sounds familiar, but I don't quite remember. But in, in any case, so that's somewhere they need to go to, and this was actually a pretty good development for. Um, for Jetfire's character, because Jetfire ends up saving Prowl from these um, these uh, metal cyclones that that uh, threw him in the air, and uh, you know during that time when I saw that, I was just thinking to myself, "Oh God, is Prowl gonna die? Please don't have Prowl die. I really like Prowl as an Autobot, all right." And and that was a really good development for him uh, to go from a Decepticon to an Autobot and have them really trust him. And uh, I feel like this episode really truly has the themes of of deception for a Decepticon because like, you know, we just think of Autobots and Decepticons as Autobots are good, Decepticons are bad, but they're really showing their true colors as Decepticons, showing what they can do to deceive their adversaries. In this case, uh, using Ultra Magnus to um, uh, launch a virus, right? Making making Ultra, Vi uh, Ultra Magnus' death seem like, um, you know, it doesn't seem entirely le legitimate because you know, even though he's dead and Jetfire proves that, you know, Megatron killed him, he's still doing bad things. Like, he's still, Megatron is still using him to do bad things, which is like, like sending out viruses. So the deception's there. They're having a hard time really trusting these, um, uh, like, uh, these, these, uh, how do you say, that? defectors, right? Uh, in which case, we're, we had Impactor as a defector. And then we also have now Jetfire as a defector. So there's really this serious issue of trust. And Optimus Prime, I don't know, he seems to be a little bit more trusting. Even though there's a part of him, 10% of him is probably like, okay, I'm going to proceed with caution. But at the same time, I don't want to kill him, right? And whereas, on the other hand, Alita 1 being the, the second in command, she is like, like a... How can we trust you? Okay, that was a uh, weird voice, but how can we trust you? Okay, that's more like that. <laughs> more like more like uh, uh, Elite One. But anyways, she always seems to be more like the, I won't say the sensible one, but the one that's more like, like, I got to put your trust, uh, your, your too much trusting in check. You know, Optimus, you got to put your trusting in check. She's that one, but Optimus always defies her in the end, so it doesn't even really matter what she says. What else did we see? We saw Ironhide. We see more of Ironhide. I'm really not used to that voice. It sounds like a younger version of Ironhide. I always knew Ironhide in the in the um, uh, uh, the the G1 as well as the Bavers as more of like a more like what do we do, Optimus? Like uh, we have to kill the Decepticons. You know, I always saw him more of a character like that. But then he, he still, 
his voice makes him sound like a younger Autobot. Anyway, speaking of younger Autobots, uh, we have Bumblebee going off on a mission. Um, and it feels like there's like several missions and stories going on, which there are. And this was an episode, I mean, this was a, a, a mission where we get to meet Sound Blaster. Now, I really didn't think that, it was a bit of a surprise. I really didn't think that we were going to meet Sound Blaster um, so early. I didn't even think we were going to meet him at all. But the fact that we met him now, it just shows us that, okay, he's a... Uh, he is definitely a character that they want to bring to this series. But they brought him in in a very different way from what I knew or what we all knew, which is, you know, him uh, being like this Frankenstein um, uh, creation of Sound Blaster, I mean, uh, uh, Blaster and Soundwave, right? But it ends up being Shockwave's creation, so one of Shockwave's creations, which ended up being a Soundwave clone, and which where he also had um, uh, also a, a flying cassette. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was Buzzsaw because like it was a golden version. Uh, but like he was in like, uh, well, I guess maybe it's not because I did see a flying like, um, you know, like a cassette Falcon in, uh, before they got to the Sea of Rust. So maybe there's a lot of them flying around. These like flying scouts. But in any case, Sound Blaster uh, was an interesting choice to bring into there. Definitely not, uh, definitely not what I expected, but Still interesting that they're bringing more of these characters in. And, you know, Sound Blaster was a, a thing from the Japanese series. As far as I remember, I saw him in the, uh, the Japanese episodes, right? But uh, that, was, that was pretty cool that they brought him in. And he is he's kind of his own thing. He's neither Autobot or Decepticon. He's kind of like this, not I wouldn't say a neutral character, but he's like his own faction, right? And he has the, all these uh, Impactor clones working for him. So uh, that's pretty interesting. And uh, what else is there? Um, oh yeah, uh, we get to see all four of the uh, of the the female Autobots. Okay, so we have Alita One as the commander. We see um, uh, Moon Racer go on a mission with um, with Optimus to the Sea of Rust. We see Chromia um, working with Mirage and Sideswipe and uh, Impactor and Ratchet. On the, the space bridge, uh, and then there's RC. We finally see RC, and out of all the female Autobots, RC is the one without all the back kibble. And Moon Racer has tons and tons of back kibble, like so much that it makes up fifty percent of her body mass, which is hilarious. So uh, let, let's talk about the Mirage mission. By the way, uh, it was really cool to see Mirage use his skills again. You know, being able to use his skills to, I mean, his ability rather to uh, create holograms you know the, they created a holographic shield to uh, to to um, to uh, uh, cover the the space bridge because they got it working again which by the way they it, they never really showed uh, impact or ratchet working on it they just showed him them doing a few things uh, and, and when he was working on it, I thought he, they were gonna actually do things like do some welding or do some hammering they were just looking at it and then suddenly it's fixed, <laughs> which is kind of funny because like the space bridge is a huge thing. I thought you'd need more workers to work on it. But in any case, that's done. Uh, but the funny, the interesting thing about uh, the, these whole, this whole hologram business with Mirage is that when he did it in G1, he just did it so conveniently, so easily. This one drew a lot of energy from his spark it took up a lot of his spark to to do that and by doing that he was really like just so uh i guess full of uh so um low on energon or his spark was just low powered to the point where like he couldn't um he wasn't able to um to even stand up so that's an interesting concept that they brought in and i think that's really cool because they should be able to just do things like that and and uh at so conveniently and then finally, they bring in, for lack of a better term, I'm going to call them Terracons. I, the first time I ever noticed any kind of Terracon thing was the Terracon Cliffjumper in Transformers Prime. Now they're bringing in Terracons or, I guess, zombie Cybertronians, which we also saw in G1 because, like, there's the uh, ghost of, not the ghost, but, like, um, uh, Optimus Prime zombie version, like this gray version. A Frankenstein version, I guess. Uh, not Frankenstein. That's a that's a bad uh, that's a bad uh, analogy because there was a Frankenstein Autobot. But anyways, uh, so that was surprising. And then uh, Moon Racer's arm gets ripped off, and I'm like, okay, what the hell? <laughs> and then they ended up as a cliffhanger, which they always do. Oops. 
uh, uh, they ended off with a cliffhanger, which they always do. But this cliffhanger really, truly felt like, okay, it was part of the bigger finale. Like, this two-part finale. Like, this two-episode larger story. So, uh, I'm, you know, now I really have to watch episode six, which I'm going to do right after I'm done with this recording. But, you know, this is a very interesting episode. Um, this one, I still got to say, while it was very interesting, a lot of new developments, this one's probably my least favorite episode. Um, it's still good. Don't get me wrong. Every single episode, all five of the episodes I've seen is good. But this one, out of all of them, uh, uh, is the uh, my least favorite, just simply because it didn't have uh, action in it. There was no action at all. Uh, there was some moments of excitement where you know Jetfire was rescuing Prowl, but there wasn't any Decepticon and a full-on Autobot Decepticon combat taking place. So you know you always want to see a little bit bit of that in these episodes, but we didn't get any of that. But that's okay because it's it's part of it's teasing the grand finale in episode six. So that's what I'm going to check out right now. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.